everyone welcome back to the channel if you are a returning subscriber and if you are new to the channel welcome i hope you consider sticking around hitting that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next videos okay so i'm here to talk about how i study the bible this was um a question posed to me in my facebook group so i wanted to come on and do a video I'm going to try to not make this long, but um, <laughs> I still have to explain certain things. Anyway, how I study the Bible. So I'm going to go through uh, my process in studying um, a real um, process. I'm speeding up some parts, but of course explaining in detail. So before I get into showing uh, the pen to the paper, I want to explain how I study the Bible. First off, I am not a, a, a Bible scholar. I am not um, a theologian, any of that. I'm just studying the Bible for my own personal understanding. So I'm just sharing how I study the Bible for my own personal understanding. This may help you. This may not help you. Maybe you have some other way of doing it. Great. But this is just my explanation of how I do it. And um, I'm not going to say that there is a right and a wrong way, but I'm going to say that everyone is different in how they learn and everyone is different in, you know, their whole process of um, absorbing information. Okay, so I'm just giving you my process, not to say that it's right or it's wrong, for you, maybe you can take away some things from it. And I know there are plenty of videos on the YouTube world of people explaining how to study the Bible and going into in-depth explanations. But I just want to preface by saying this is how I do it, how I do it from my own personal understanding. Okay, with that said, this in front of me is my fire Bible. This is what I use for studying. I'm not going to go into in-depth fire bible review i did go through some detailed explanation on uh what's in my spiritual arsenal video i will try to link that in the eye above so that you can see that where i go through the bibles that i have and i did go through um quite a few things that um in this bible <clears throat> excuse me and a lot of the keys that are in here um, they have these little keys on the side. I'm just going to let you know about that. So they've got this dub and anywhere you see that dove symbol within the fire Bible, it talks about, uh, baptized in or filled with the Holy spirit. Uh, anytime you see a flame, it is going to be next. It's going to be in regards to the gifts of the Holy spirit. Um, anytime you see this grape vine here, it's going to talk about the fruit of the Holy spirit. Anytime you see a hand, that symbol is going to indicate healing and so on and so on. Not going through all of these symbols and I've color coded them for my own personal reference. There are charts, there are maps, there are theme finders, there are subject index and reading plans all contained within the Fire Bible. The Fire Bible, in my opinion, is the bomb.com. I love this Bible. Um, for instance, going into Genesis, it gives you an outline and then it gives you the author. It gives you the theme. It gives you the date of the writing. It gives you background information. I love that. It does that for every book of the Bible. It gives you the purpose and it gives you a survey and special features. New Testament fulfillment. All of this is contained here. So you've got these little keys. Do you see? I'm just flipping through briefly to show you. And also within the Fire Bible, they're in the... Um, near closer to the spine section they will have cross references corresponding to the verses so for verse 4 you can, in genesis um, 2 you can see that there is a cross reference to um, i'm going to say that is um, chronicles 1 and 1 so there's a cross reference scripture there there's also commentary on the bottom of the pages not for every verse but for most verses contained within uh, the scripture, you will find commentary at the bottom portion of each page. So that's what I love about the Fire Bible. It really helps you to um, 
to dig in to um, studying the Bible. Okay, so this is one of the tools that I use in my Bible study. I will also let you know um, some other tools that I'm using. So let's get into that. And again, I'm explaining this for the novice. This is someone who is like just beginning to break into Bible study or they just don't know how to get started or anything like that. Some of what I may share that I do may be beneficial to you. Okay, so I'm gonna put the fire Bible aside. Let's get into the next thing. Okay, so the next tool that I use um, is the eSword. I realize that a lot of people use um, digital resources and um, one of the main ones that are used by um, most people is the Blue Letter Bible, which you can find uh, via your desktop version or either uh, via an app. But the Blue Letter Bible is what a lot of people use. I use um, what's called the eSword. The eSword can be um, downloaded via desktop. It's, it's, you can download it to your desktop or you can download the app on um, whatever mobile device you have. So I have it on my tablet. I also have it on my phone and I have it on my desktop. But just keep in mind, if you're looking at the eSword, I find that the desktop version has a lot more um, downloadable resources that you can use and I'll show you. So this is the eSword app. <clears throat> Excuse me. And all right. So this is how it opens up and you can set up your screen to look however you want. So if you tap here, it can give you just the verse, just the, um, the scripture, or you can split the screen to show multiple um, views. You can show them stacked, right? Or you can show them with the multiple, multiple view, sorry. This is in the King James Version. So it's showing um, the KJV, and there's also a KJV plus that's in here. So for instance, this is Jesus and the woman in, of Samaria. So John four and one says when, um, gives you the KJV plus, and it gives you the, um, the Strong's, I believe it's, I'm saying it right. Um, the, the definitions of each word. I said, shouldn't say strong, sorry, the definitions of each word. So if I want to, um, click on say Pharisees. So it's going it, to, this is the New Testament. So it's going to give you the Greek and the key is G5330. So if I'm clicking on the G5330, it, it brings it up and see, it shows you, um, Pharisees also gives it to you in the Greek, um, writing and pronunciation. And it says of Hebrew origin, and it says a separatist, that is exclusively religious, a Phariseean, that is Jewish secretary, Pharisee. Okay, so you can look up each word um, only in the King James Version plus. So that that's going to be here. So with the eSword, so you can understand, you can download different versions of the Bible. Some are, a lot are free, but some will um, cost. So you can see with the lock next to it, that means you have to, to pay for that version of the Bible. If there is no lock, that's a free version. So I have the Passion Translation downloaded and the KJV Plus is um, free download, KJV, um, the ESV, the ERV, CEV, all these are with the check mark are the ones that I've downloaded and you can get them as a free version. Um, so for instance, if you wanted the message version, I believe that one you'd have to pay for. So it's locked and you would have to pay for it. I believe you'd have to pay for the message, but there are so many versions of the Bible in here. Okay. So you can do that. It also gives you the option to download commentaries. So I mentioned that the Fire Bible had commentaries in the bottom. And for those who do not know, a commentary is what it is. It's a comment. 
Now, it's not a comment like you and I would comment, but these comments come from um, Bible historians, uh, theologians, I should say, theologians who have written um, these commentaries. And it just, based, uh, I don't want to go into it too deep, but that's just a broad overview. The commentaries are uh, basically the, the review and the comments that are written by these Bible uh, theologians. And without going into anything too in depth, as far as, you know, expository or exegetical or devotional or cultural, those are different commentaries, but I don't want to add any confusion. Starting out, commentaries are good because some commentators will give you um, background, meaning giving you, they'll set the stage of what was taking place at the time when the, the scripture was writing. Well, I'm sorry, the scripture was written. Okay, so that's just like a basis. So the commentaries you can download in here. There are different commentaries that you can download. Um, let me go back to that. So I have uh, the Cambridge Bible for schools and colleges. That commentary is downloaded. The Expositor's Bible is um, downloaded. Um, F.B. Meyer through the Bible day by day. That commentary is downloaded. And these are just like additional references. Okay. And like I said, the commentators, they're giving you, some are giving you history. Some are, are giving you, um, a teaching. There are commentaries that have teachings that, um, or I should say there are commentaries that are geared more for, uh, like pastors who need to preach or teach on the word. Okay. Don't want to go too deep into that. All right. So you can download also dictionaries. So you've got all of these dictionaries that you can download. Um, you've got the Webster's, you've got Tory Smith's, the Knaves Topical Bible, all these dictionaries you can download in the um, eSword app. And as you can see, the lock versions are the Nelson's New Illustrated and then the Vines Complete Expository. You can also download lexicons. Okay. You can also download uh, reference books. There are so many reference books that are in here that you can download. For instance, um, one that I'm just excited to read is uh, David Shepherd, Psalmist King by F.B. Meyer. So I'm, I'm going to enjoy reading that. That's just a, a reference book download. So that's just to give you an example. And of course, there are devotionals as well that you can download. Okay, not too many, but there are some, some locked and unlocked, just as you would in every, each category. So this is also a tool that I use in, in Bible study. Uh, me personally, I love the King James Version. It's not for everyone because everyone can't understand it, but I do read other versions, like I said, for understanding. Another tool that I will use is, and I'm sure everyone is familiar with this one, is the Bible app. And I go to the Bible app because they're all of the Bible versions of, a, a, um, of course, are unlocked in here. And, you know, you don't have to download it in the eSword app. So you can access all the Bible versions in here. And also you can get the Audible. So that's one thing that I like to do. So now we're going to get into the meat of how I Bible study. So for today, I'm going to be looking at, so let's pull it up. And I'll pull it up in the NLT. Okay, this is, I just downloaded this to um, the app back onto my tablet, the, the Bible app, because I have it on my phone. So let's look at First Peter. I'm going to be looking at chapter 2. And I'm going to be looking at 
verses 22 and 23. That's what I'm going to be um, studying. But instead of just looking at those two verses, I'm trying to get background. I'm trying to get context. So in order to do that, I'm going to read the whole in, entire chapter two. So I'm going to read the entire chapter of um, 1 Peter 2. Also, like I said in my fire Bible, it has this at the beginning of every book of the Bible. It's going to give me a background on 1 Peter. And it tells me that Peter, or Simon Peter as he's also known, is the writer of 1 Peter and also First. Peter. Um, and also Second Peter, he's the writer of this book, and that he sought the assistance of Silas, who was more versed in the Greek language, to help him write out these books, but he relied on him more heavily in, in First Peter. All this information is contained in the background, and then it tells me the purpose in which he wrote First Peter. So all of this is in here. This is, this is just the information that I need to just get an understanding, to get context. And then, like I said, I'm going to read the entire chapter of chapter two and not just focus on those two verses. We're trying to get, trying to get context and not just look at those verses because a lot can get um, misconstrued in just looking at the two verses and not seeing the whole big picture. It's like taking two pieces of a puzzle part and you don't know what the full picture is right okay so that's what i do so i'm going to read that i'm going to read this i'm going to read that i'll even look at the commentary and then i'm also going to play the audio so before i even get into writing anything i can mull around and just um while i'm doing something i can still listen to this i can listen to the whole of chapter chapter two and then in the Bible app is where I'm going to do that. So that's why I, I use the Bible app. You can also just hit that audio button. And it will play. We've got a little swing and spin. And you can switch narrators in here as well. So you you can listen to that and say so you just don't you 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 just don't want to um, hear his his um, narration and you want another one. There is a second option, and you can switch narrators. Chapter two. So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy. So I'll do that, and so probably more than once, because I just want to get that in my spirit. I just want to hear that. I just want to listen to it. Right? That's before I get into going to write down anything. I can be working and I'm just listening to that chapter. So then now when I go to the paper, I've listened to it. I've gotten a little bit of background. Um, I understand why the, 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 the entire book of this Bible was written. I understand um, the author and even a little bit of the author's background and I can better get a I can get a better understanding of the verses that I'm now going to hone in on. I like to study verse by verse. I like to study the verses. I want to break it down to its least denominator if that makes sense. I want to break it down. I want full understanding. So then I'll show you what that looks like and we're going to finish up this video with a speed a sped up version where I'm going to be writing in my Bible study journal and then I'm just going to do a voiceover just explaining what that process looks like and getting it down on paper okay okay so this is voiceover Michelle coming to you <laughs> so what you're gonna see on what you're not going to see is what I do before getting into Bible study which is praying 
I'm not talking about some long-winded prayer, but you're asking God to just um, help you to get understanding, to gain revelation of the word and your I even speak to the Holy Spirit because he was given to us as our helper. So I say, Holy Spirit, as I'm about to get into this word, help me to quiet my soul and help my spirit to be open to receive what I need to receive from what I'm about to um, read, you know, receive from the word and to be able to receive that revelation that God wants to pour into me and gain that understanding that I need. Nothing long-winded, just a simple prayer. And just make sure that you've cut out all the noise, you've silenced the phone, you have just created seclusion because interruption is going to just throw you off. I just want to say that. Make sure that you are silencing all of your technology, sorry, technology, and that you are just eliminating all distractions. So getting into this, you're seeing me on the screen. I'm just, and this, I just want to say this is this, you don't have to do this. This is just me. This is what I choose to do. You don't have to do it. Some people will draw circles. Some people will paint. Some people just use plain pen and paper. You can just do that. Whatever you feel to do, you do it. I just like to be creative in it. I like to just have fun with the word. I don't want it to be boring. So that's why I listen to it audibly. That's why I, I read through it and do all of those things. I want to engage in it. I want to put myself in it as well. So I'm putting down these um, stickers from the Happy Planner full boxes and I'm putting them down. I first write in that long box. I write out the two verses and then I'm taking the smaller um, stickers and then after I've circled those words that I really want to hone in on, I'm taking that e-sword and I'm looking at it in the King James Version because the King James Version, the KJV Plus is going to um, give me the, uh, the words that I'm looking for translated um, from the Greek. Okay, so I can take that plus and I can, for instance, who did not sin? I click on sin, it's gonna open it up in the Greek. It's gonna give me um, the, the, the meaning of it. And then I do the same with all of the other words that I'm trying to um, hone in on in these verses, um, such as guile and reviled and, and suffered and, and committed and judge, judgeth and righteously. Those words I'm picking out of the verses and I'm taking them and I'm just, like I said before, breaking it down to his lowest denominator. I'm getting the meanings, all of the words that, um, um, that they're like, in other words, synonyms for these words that would just help to get, you know, just help your understanding of it. So, for instance, one of them that I just loved was the part where it said, uh, when I, where I looked up committed. Committed said to surrender, yield up, entrust, give over, cast up, deliver up. This is what Jesus was doing. And I did all of that. And then I'm going to go through the commentaries and then I'm just going to read through them to see what the commentators are saying, not to take what they are putting um, in their commentaries word for word, but to pull out certain parts of it. And what I love is that um, reading the back, the background and, um, uh, of the, and, and who the author is and why the author wrote this gave so much understanding. So we understand that it's Peter who is writing this and he's writing it from a standpoint where he is like reliving or recounting what Jesus endured, Jesus's sufferings. So I'm, I, I, I take that and I'm, I'm, I'm just keeping that at the forefront because at the same time, Peter is writing this to Christians and he's letting them know that look, you're going to suffer, but Jesus also suffered. So you have to suffer just as he suffered. And you're going to suffer because, because you're following in, once you follow Christ, you're going to suffer as well. And he tells them this and Peter, and this is just what I wrote out. This is what I, I gleaned from the passage, from the chapter from the commentary and from just breaking down the words. And this is what you're gonna see me writing out on the bottom um, of the, 
towards the bottom of the page and it says Peter gives an encouragement, but more so a blueprint of the Christian walk. He lays out what Christ endured by letting them know he suffered, but despite what he endured, he did not return railing for, for railing. That means he didn't, you know, it wasn't tit for tat. He didn't, he, he, they didn't hit him and he tried to hit back. No, he endured um, and he did not return railing for railing, though he was met with taunts and he could have called down 12 legions of angels at any time, but he said not a word. And instead he entrusted into the hands of his father, knowing that he is a righteous judge. Jesus took this patiently, peacefully, silently. He took all of this, uh, 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 the abuse, the beatings, the spittings. He endured all of that. And it was, Peter recounted this to the Christians to let them know what Christ suffered on our behalf, but also to let them know, <laughs> you're probably not gonna suffer anything this bad, maybe you will, but understand that it was for a purpose and it was for a reason Jesus did this for you. And though you may suffer, don't think that you can do anything different aside from what Christ did. You have to follow in the same footsteps of our Lord and our Savior. So I don't want to go on and on, but this is <laughs> essentially how I do my Bible study. And then lastly, I'm going through the cross references and I'm looking at those cross references. Uh, so for instance, one of the cross references that I took note of was uh, Luke 23 and 46. And it says, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. So where it says that in 1 Peter, but committed himself to him that judge it righteously. This is where, where Jesus committed himself into the hands of his father. And another verse that I... Uh, noted as a, another cross reference is is Isaiah 53 and 9 and it says and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth so this is kind of a foretelling um, in Isaiah of what Jesus would endure and what Jesus would do. And it says that neither was any deceit in his mouth. No, there was no deceit. Jesus didn't fuss. He didn't cuss. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't lash out. He did nothing. He committed himself in silent patience to the Lord and he endured everything that was done to him, knowing, knowing that he was um, um, sacrificing himself for us. So those are just two of the cross references that I noted. There are other, there's of course, um, 2 Corinthians 5, 21 and Hebrews 12 and 3, which I also noted as well um, as cross references. But again, this is how I do my Bible study. And like I said, I can't tell you there's a wrong or a, a right way, but this is how I do it. This is for Michelle's understanding but if there's anything that you can take away from it that can help you, then by all means, use it. It's not copyrighted. <laughs> so that's what I just wanted to share. And I wanted to um, help out um, that person in my Facebook group who did have a question on, on, on whether or not I had shown how I do my Bible study. So here it is. Anyway, I hope that this helped you um, or it, it, gave you some tips or maybe you can use some of the tools that I've shared on here. And if there's anything that you use um, differently than I do, then please share it in the comments. Tell me how you do your Bible study. Tell me the tools, the reference books, or the Bibles or the, the sort of Bibles that or versions that you use or the commentaries. Please share all those things with me in the comment. I would love to hear from you. I would love to know what it is that you do because maybe I can take something from you as well. And um, yeah, that's about it. So I hope you comment. Also like this video. If it, um, if you enjoyed it in any kind of way, please like it. And like I said, if you're new to the channel, please, I hope you subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss out on the new videos that um, I'm going to upload. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me in this video. Be blessed, everyone. Bye.